I am Jennifer Rice, BC's Parliamentary Secretary for Rural Health and the MLA for North Coast, Haida Gwaii. I'm, I'm delighted to be your MC today and I, I want to just thank you all for being here. I want to start off by acknowledging the traditional territory of the Lekwungen peoples and the Songhees and the Esquimalt nations whose territory we're gathered on today. Many thanks to uh, Minister Martinez Ferrada, who is the Min Federal Minister of Tourism and the Minister responsible for the Economic Development Agency of Canada. Many thanks to Minister Anne Kang, um, our Minister of Municipal Affairs here provincially, uh, and to Mayor Pond, who is the Mayor of Prince Rupert. And I just also want to acknowledge some of the other uh, people here uh, today, can, including our Member of Parliament, Taylor Backrack, uh, the Minister for Transportation and Infrastructure, um, Rob Fleming, and uh, the Minister for Emergency Management and Climate Readiness, uh, Bowen Ma, with uh, Baby Azalea. We're so delighted to have Baby Azalea here today. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, members from the City of Prince Rupert, Rob Buchan, the CAO. I saw Richard Pucci a minute. Richard P uh, Pucci is here. I, hopefully, I haven't forgotten anyone. Um, but anyways, I'm delighted that you're, that you're all here um, today. Uh, Prince Rupert's current water, distri water distribution system is undergoing an increasing number of water main and service line failures including a major line break uh, during Christmas of 2022, um, which threatened the water supply for the community, which is uh, home to the third largest port in Canada. We're, here, we're all here in the BC Legislature providing a backdrop for an announcement that is of critical importance to the people in my part of the province, specifically Prince Rupert. But it's also great news for BC, and a reminder of the tremendous benefit to our communities when all three levels of government work together. To share more about this important investment for Prince Rupert and the North, I'd like to introduce the Honourable Soraya Martinez Ferrada, Canada's Minister of Tourism and Minister Responsible for the Economic Development Agency of Canada. Thank you. Thank you for that kind of introduction. And uh, I will not acknowledge everybody, so this could go quickly because it's a really good announcement and we want to get to it. Um, but uh, let me start by recognizing people here with us. Uh, Minister Ann Kang, this is our first encounter and I'm so glad to, to see you. And uh, like you said, meet a woman of uh, diversity and color in politics, like uh, myself and you. And so glad to, to meet you. Uh, Mayor Pond, pleasure to meet you too today. And the Port Authority, thank you for that really quick conversation. I know uh, that what you do is very important, not only for your, your region, but for the tourism sector. I want to also acknowledge my friend and colleague from uh, Parliament. Uh, uh, Taylor, he will be addressing a few words and also, um, I think after me, if or, well, you decide. Um, <laughs> so I'm here on behalf of Sean Fraser, Minister of Infrastructure, that couldn't be here today. So uh, it's actually a good news for me because I'm doing this great announcement. As you know, climate change is threatening our communities everywhere in this country. Whether it's stronger storm or warmer winters, we are already seeing the impact all across the country. This is, isn't something, isn't something that we need to wait years to, to do, and it's here now, so we have to address uh, the, the action today. In my own portfolio of Minister of Tourism, I see it all the time. You have seen it, most of it, here in BC. Uh, Cypress, Grosse Mountain, barely had snow this year. Uh, in Quebec, the Winter Canal uh, Carnival has its own hotel ice uh, melting down because it's actually warmer outside than inside. And uh, winters make it uh, a tourist destination for Canada, and we see that climate change is putting that at risk. And that is why we have to keep fighting climate change and doing actions and announcements like we're doing today. Of course, it's early news to people here in BC, as, you, as I said, and as a government, we're taking action on fighting climate change. 
helping communities adapt and mitigate uh, this, uh, these impact. And that's why we have put a price on pollution because pollution cannot be free anymore. And we all have to contribute to that. And giving the proceeds back to Canadians in the Canada carbon rebate. We also must ensure that our infrastructure can handle the demands of tomorrow because the demands will only get bigger. And that brings me what we are announcing today. So on behalf of Minister Fraser, I'm proud to announce that the federal government will help upgrade the Princess Rupert's water and wastewater infrastructure with over $77 million from the Disaster Mitigation and Adaptation Fund. It will ensure that people in Prince Rupert have clean drinking water today and tomorrow. And Mr. Pond and, and we, Mary Pond, we talked about this earlier. There's no small community. There's no small town. Every people, every soul needs to have drinking water and we have to ensure that it's one person needs it, we have to be there to give it to them. Right now, Prince Hubert's water infrastructure isn't ready for an earthquake. Earthquakes, earthquake. I'm a Francophone, you can tell, right? Um, its pipes are made of cast iron, which makes them vulnerable. And Mr. Mayor has going around with a little box and I think it's a good thing to have. The city will use this funding to modernize the pipes as well as sanitaries and storm sewers, replacing them with durable material. Today's announcement is a great example of how three governments can work together to make it happen. We share the same goal, which is protecting our communities from climate change. At the federal level, we've introduced Canada's national adaptation strategy and our investments since 2018 have been in the billions of dollars. And we need to protect Canadians, build and maintain infrastructure, and help communities fight climate change. Because the impact is undeniable. And honestly, and we were saying this with the CEO of, port, of the port, uh, it's big investments, but it's investment that will prevent, because if a disaster happens, let me tell you, it will cost you a lot more. So we better do it now. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Minister Martinez Ferrada. I, uh, I think I may have failed in my introductions to introduce Sean Stevenson, uh, who is a really important partner in this, and so I, I will owe you a dinner, Sean. But Sean Stevenson is the CEO of the fastest growing port in North America. He's the CEO of the Port of Prince Rupert, and I wanted to acknowledge your presence and thank you so much for uh, supporting this collective movement, this <laughs> collective uh, um, path forward for our community. We need Prince Rupert for the Port of Prince Rupert. Port, uh, the Port of Prince Rupert absolutely needs us uh, as, as the city of Prince Rupert. So uh, again, my apologies. Um, please uh, please uh, acknowledge and welcome Sean Stevenson. Um, so it's my pleasure now uh, to introduce my colleague, uh, and Kang, BC's Minister of Municipal Affairs, to the podium. Thank you so much, Jen, for the introduction. And um, I am Anne Kang. I'm the Minister for Municipal Affairs in the province of BC. And I'm honored to be joining everyone here today on the territory of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, uh, otherwise known as the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations. I also want to recognize in the audience, um, this is a cross-ministry uh, effort as well, so Minister Ralph Fleming and as well Minister uh, Bowen Ma is here. And uh, a special shout out to, to a friend who's here, Skeena Bokley MP, um, sorry, Taylor Backrock, um, for being here. And um, so many people that have been introduced, thank you all so much for being here. This is a day that we will remember and is taking place here at the Hall of Honor in Victoria. And it's going to be stories that Mir Pond and uh, many generations of Prince Rupians uh, will continue to talk about. So local governments face more challenges today because much of their infrastructure is outdated and uh, this aging infrastructure can harm the environment and pose health risks to people. Unfortunately, Prince Rupert knows this all too well. And that's why it's clear that we must do everything that we can to help our aging infrastructure. I want to say to local governments that we hear you, we're listening, and we're taking action. 
My ministry will continue to offer important support to help local governments maintain infrastructure that is critical for providing essential services to communities and to homes. These services include clean water, wastewater management, solid water management, and disaster mitigation. When I first met Mayor Pond and his team back in December of 2022, we saw firsthand the critical need for their community to have reliable water pipes and sewer systems to ensure the vibrancy and the growth of their community. Last year, Prince Rupert faced a serious situation and had to declare a state of emergency to fix its water distribution system. This was done to ensure that all residences and businesses would have a reliable water supply. To help with this, a year ago next week, the province took action by investing $65 million so that Prince Rupert could replace crucial sections of its aging water distribution system. To build on that, the federal government stepped in uh, and stepped forward to speed up the approval process for getting funding from the Disaster Mitigation and Adaptation Fund, carrying this project across to the finish line. Applause. <laughs> teamwork. This is teamwork. We're excited. So I do want to extend a big thank you to Minister Sean Fraser and Minister Soraya Martinez Ferreira uh, and the federal government for their support and especially um, uh, MP uh, Bakra as well. I'm proud of the cross-government partnership with the City of Prince Rupert and the federal government to make this water and sewer system upgrades in Prince Rupert a reality. Together, we're building hard, we're working hard to make our community stronger, where people can have a good life, because when we all work together and we put people at the heart of every choice, we are more resilient against the challenges that we face. So let's talk about the impacts. What are we fixing today? British Columbia is an incredible place that we all call home. We have record number of people moving into the province. With the rapid growth, we're seeing that it's clear to everyone that here there's a big strain on infrastructure and community facilities. I know that all local governments are working hard to support BC's communities, but I do recognize that with change comes challenges. And we recognize that we can't solve all these challenges overnight. In 2023, we supported local governments with a $450 million towards 23 of the most critical infrastructure projects like Prince Rupert projects in community throughout British Columbia. These investments exemplify how we are supporting sustainability and the environment for British Columbians and our families for many years to come. Last year, we also provided the $1 billion Growing Communities Fund, which was shared across all 188 local governments to help them tackle their unique infrastructure and amenity needs. This included more than $4 million for the city of Prince Rupert. Each community has been able to determine which projects to support and where to allocate their funds for the greatest impact when it comes to meeting their local priorities. Whether it's road and pathway improvements, childcare facilities, affordable housing, or other community needs, local governments can make the call on how the funds are used because we recognize that local elected officials engage with people in their communities daily and know best what their communities need. The province is dedicated to working together with the federal government and with the local government to address our uh, common worries about the increasing cost of services and infrastructure. We're tackling these challenges head on together and this shows how committed we are to keeping our communities strong and sustainable. By joining forces with the federal and local governments, we're not just fixing today's problem, we're also preparing for a prosperous future for all of us here in BC and also Canada. It is crucial that we keep focusing on the people because, uh, on people's need, because by working together, we can get through the tough times and make British Columbia an even greater place for all of us to live. So I am so proud of all that we can accomplish together. I look forward to your continual partnership and working collaboratively together. So thank you so much, everyone, for making today such a momentous day. Thank you.
Uh, thank you so much, Minister Kang. I'd now like to uh, invite uh, the Mayor of Prince Rupert, Herb Pont, to the podium to say a few words. Thank you. Um, because I know Minister Kang in a previous life was a school teacher, I came with show and tell. Uh, a cube here that contains what a pipe should look like and what a pipe in Prince Rupert currently looks like. And the, and the most significant one is this is actually a section of pipe that was removed. And you can tell that doesn't hold a lot of water. And that's why we're here today. This is the story of a really big port in a small city. We have big ports in big cities and we have small ports in small cities, but Rupert happens to be a place where there's a really big port in a very small city. And so the challenges of making sure that the community scales up to support this incredible growing port infrastructure so that farmers in the prairies can send their grain so that energy products from the peace can move out, so that forest products from across British Columbia can move, and indeed containers from across Canada and North America can reach markets in Asia. Pretty hard to do that if the community doesn't have water, right? So this is a really significant moment. Prince Rupert itself is in, has an incredible harbor with 10,000 years or more of history. The Tsimshan people lived there, fished there, fought to protect it from invaders from the north and invaders from the west. It's their territory on which we get to operate and live and work and play. A generation ago, in the early 1900s, there was this dream of a competitive port in Prince Rupert. The community didn't exist. It was going to be a competitive rail line to, to the southern route. In fact, it was going to take advantage of the most favorable grade through the Rockies. And the fact that Prince Rupert is days closer to Asia than any other port in North America. That was the whole idea behind Prince Rupert. And it's taken us a long time to get here, but it is happening. Third largest port in North America, fastest growing, and watch us. You just watch what's going to happen on the North Coast. But that little community of Prince Rupert, if you think the 12,000 taxpayers who currently live there are up to the task of scaling up really quickly to meet all those needs, you're wrong. We need help. We are getting help. And so I'm just so thankful that we're here today to be able to celebrate this. This has been a monumental effort. I don't think that anybody can appreciate how monumental this effort is. And this is going to sound like a really bad Academy Award speech, but I have to recognize people for their contributions. And I have to start with the Premier of British Columbia. Uh, he, he grasped the idea quickly. He, he moved quickly. And working with Minister Kang and other ministers, Minister Fleming, Minister Ma, made available to the city of Prince Rupert $65 million to get on to fixing those pipes. And we were ecstatic, as you can imagine. And we went and we sat and we talked and we got back to the Premier and we said, we think we can turn the 65 into a lot more and do a lot more than just what 65 million will buy. We'll borrow 48, that's the most we can borrow, it takes us to the maximum of our borrowing capacity and we'll go talk to the federal government. And when we went to the, talk to the federal government, we were never alone. The Port of Prince Rupert was with us at every single meeting, validating that this was critical to Canada. There's a whole lot more than just 12,000 people living on the North Coast, that, it, that it's the trade route on which Canada depends. And so I want to acknowledge them. And, and then I need to, I, I was actually hoping I was going to get a picture today between Minister Fraser and, and Premier Eby. Uh, if you've seen how tall each of them are, you'd know how short I would look, and I'm six feet. But, uh, Minister, please take back to Minister Fraser just our incredible gratitude for, for, for what he did uh, and what he's done here today. 
There are two people that, and, and all the staff, every single member of, of all of the staff, provincial, federal, stunning, like the, the work that you've done, amazing. Um, I've already talked about the PRPA, uh, the Prince Rupert Port Authority, they've been fantastic. I want to acknowledge my own council and the councils that preceded us that have done the work to get us to this place. Uh, the previous council replaced the water dam, it was well over 100 years old. No point in replacing the water pipes as we're doing if the dam fails, right? So this has been a, a, a march towards a destination, but there are two dogs with bones. Gee, I think I called you a dog, I'm sorry. There are two dogs with bones that have been unbelievable on our side, and that's our MLA, Jen Rice, and our MP, Taylor Backrack. And, and, and they have, they've just been awesome in everything that, that we needed from them. I gotta compliment our city staff. They, they have been organized and, and putting this message forward in a really credible way. We couldn't be here doing what we're doing. I don't make these at home. Somebody else makes them for me, right? And, and gets me out. And then finally, I, I want to acknowledge the public works staff back home. Because while we're doing all this work, they're in trenches in some of the most miserable conditions you can imagine dealing with another explosion and then another explosion. And if you've seen some of the pictures, the, the, the water is just going high, high in the air. They're doing the tough work. And so I don't know if they're even ever going to see this, but thank you for all you do, all the men and women. And with that, I want to say thank you, Minister. I've got 77 million reasons why I think I love you. And you have 65 million to love me <laughs> and Minister Kang. Um, so just before we conclude, we have time for our MP, Taylor Backrack, to say a quick few words. And I also wanted to ask you, Sean, if you were interested, um, just before we conclude and go on to the questions. Thanks. Thank you, Jen, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, what a tremendous day for Prince Rupert. Uh, as the Member of Parliament for Northwest BC, for Skeena Bulkley Valley, it makes me incredibly proud to be here and to congratulate the team at the City of Prince Rupert. I think Herb might be the happiest mayor in British Columbia today. Uh, I used to sit in a mayor's chair and I know that the worst days as mayor are when the pipes break and you have to deal with a crisis and the best days are when the partnerships with the federal and provincial governments come together and you get the resources you need to fix the problems that you face. Uh, this money being announced today is really huge and it recognizes not only the importance of Prince Rupert as a city in its own right, but also the significance as a nationally uh, important trade gateway for our country. And that's why ensuring that they have that core infrastructure is so important. Uh, core infrastructure like drinking water and wastewater is really the foundation on which so many aspects of communities' quality of life are based. Um, I want to express my gratitude to the team at the city. They have an incredible municipal team. It's been such an honor to, to work alongside you to uh, push for these resources that are being announced today. Uh, and of course, all of the, of the players that came to the table, especially the province. Not only did the provincial government lead the way with $65 million, but we know that once you fix the pipes down the road, you have to maintain them one day they're going to have to be replaced again. And so the province's commitment to the Resource Benefits Alliance in the recent budget is just such an important part, not only of allowing Prince Rupert to maintain its infrastructure over time, but every community in Northwest British Columbia, Smithers and Terrace and Kitimat, right across the board, uh, it's going to make a huge difference. And so to Jennifer, my provincial colleague, for all of her leadership, uh, this is a great day. It's a great day for Prince Rupert, it's a great day for British Columbia, and it's a great day for Canada. So thank you so much for allowing me to offer my hearty congratulations. And Herb, I look forward to celebrating this success back in your wonderful city. And the last thing I'll say, Minister martinez Ferrada, thank you for being here. And thank you for your government's uh, work alongside us to make sure that this happens. It's great to see you in British Columbia. 
Soraya and I had a chance to work together on the transport committee and, uh, and we have a, a good relationship and when announcements like this come to bear, it just shows what is possible when we work together. So thank you so much. Uh, and fi uh, finally, I'd like to invite Sean Stevenson, the CEO of the Port of Prince Rupert, to the podium. Thanks, Emily Rice. Um, I, a, a lot of great things have been said already today. Um, a world-class port needs a world-class port city if we're going to meet our potential and serve, you know, to create the economic uh, opportunities that a, that a strategic gateway for trade can for British Columbians and for Canadians. So. Um, great things can happen when we see partnerships between all levels of government um, and we see the Port of Prince Rupert playing a more important role in Canada's trade in the Indo-Pacific region with billions of dollars of capital investment uh, coming and, and, and having the certainty that we've got a community that can support that growth and expansion. So great day and I'm, I'm grateful for being part of the announcement today. Thank you. So uh, I just want to thank everyone for being here today. Um, I too wanted to thank the Public Works team back in Prince Rupert. I will never forget driving home on Christmas Day in the pitch black with the, the wind and the rain blowing sideways and it's freezing on your glasses and uh, seeing our team, our crew, missing their turkey dinners with their families to uh, deal with an, a critical emergency of essentially a geyser blowing out of uh, a main water line not too far from my street. And then after that, there was another one, and then there was another one. And so uh, the winter of 2022 was just tragic uh, on, on, so many, on, on so many grounds. And so uh, this announcement is for them too, because they deserve a healthy workplace where they don't have to make the sacrifices that they have been making, uh, putting things together. So again, thank you for joining us, and we'll now move to the Q&A or questions and answers session um, with the media. Thank you. Thank you very much. Media on the line, please press star one for the opportunity to ask a question and a follow-up. Any media in the room, please approach me behind the bank of cameras if you have a question. We'll just give folks a second to queue up if they have any questions. All right. It appears you've answered all the questions in your uh, remarks, everyone. Thank you very much. That concludes today's event.